Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that as you will have seen from the title, the thumbnail, and if you've read any of it, the description, this is um, a collaboration. At the moment there's only the four of us in it uh, and everybody that is taking part is listed in the description box below. This is the Nikolaus or Sinterklaus inspired makeup. Um, it's a, a traditions around the world that hopefully we're going to continue doing throughout the year. Um, but this particular tradition with Nikolaus or Sinterklaus is uh, celebrated mainly in Germany, the Netherlands and Belgium. So, if you want to find out a little bit more about these traditions, hopefully I've got my information correct in it. Wow, this foundation is really too powerful for me. Perils of buying online, ghost head. <clears throat> And I even added more bronzer and blush as well. So, if you want to see me create this beautiful red look using the handbook for the recently deceased, no, the palette for the recently deceased, then, my darlings, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy my contribution to celebrating this particular tradition. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I have got notes in my given enough gin I could rule the world book to make sure that I get this information correct. So this is the, um, hopefully the start of a series, um, and it's Traditions Worldwide, and we're starting with Niklaus, which, as I understand it, is only really celebrated in Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands. So, a very northern part of Europe. Well, not very northern, because obviously you've got Sweden at the very top, but you know what I mean, the northern part of the European coastline, shall we say. Um, this is still a teaching channel. I am still going to be going quite slowly, but I may not be explaining things as well as I usually do, because obviously it's more important for me to get across the tradition that we're doing. Um, I will talk you through the eye shapes though, I'll do that now. Um, so, any, But if you see me looking down, it's because I'm reading from my notes to make sure I get it right. So I'm really sorry if that is irritating. I'll try and do it as well as I can. Hopefully my eyes will stay on screen and you won't be looking at my hairline, but I can't promise, I'll do my best. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF and primed. And apparently, the previous look that I did, I did not get that mascara off very well. Oopsie. Um, happens to the best of us. Right, um, if I'm going too slowly for you, there is a speed widget up there. Feel free to use it. The um, eye primer that I'm using is my usual Chrome Pebble in blank page cotton. I do have a discount for this. I do not get PR from them. Everything that I have got, I have bought and I have paid for. Um, but I absolutely love this particular primer because it goes on dry, which means you can blend on it immediately without having to set it. So you don't have to make that compromise between blendability 
for ease of blendability and colour impact. Right, let's talk you through the different eye shapes. Now I've got deep set eyes, but um, people with deep set eyes are often told they have hooded lids or mistakenly believe they have hooded lids. The reason for this is because we have the same symptoms. We get transference of colour onto the upper lid if we're cutting our crease. We can't just cut the socket, we have to cut onto the upper lid. And if we're using glitters, even with glitter glue, we'll get a bare patch right through the middle there. But the way that you deal with both eye to eye shapes and the way that you apply makeup is very different. So I'm going to talk you through both types and then give you a work around for each one. Right, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it. And some days when I'm really swollen with fibro and I've got a spot here which is making this a bit puffier, you can see even less of it. But you can see it. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of that mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I will demo with this eye um, deep set because then I can make sure I'm still on screen because this is the eye that I'm blinding. So if I cover my visible mobile lid and then close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away. And if I cover the upper lid and do the same, you can see I've got a bit of lid space there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. So, if you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your upper lid a new crease line. Obviously, this is going to reduce the space between the new crease and the brow. So use slightly smaller blending brushes um, and if necessary take the colour right up to the brow rather than leaving a gap. If however you have deep set eyes like myself what we have to do when we're putting a colour through the crease is every so often stop, relax our brows, look forward and just make sure we've brought it up high enough that you can still see it when your eyes are open. So. Two very different workarounds for two very different eye shapes and that's why it's important to know which type of eye you've actually got. Right, I'm going to be going in with um, some of the brushes that I recommended on my AliExpress brushes. These are the Ranimore or Animore, I'm never quite sure which it is. Um, I'm going to be going in with three different types of brush. I'm going to go in with a tapered blending brush, which is a very loosely packed round brush. Then I'm going to go in with the contour brush 9, which is a more densely packed, smaller headed round brush. Then I'm going to go in with this medium shader brush 2, which is just a flat brush for packing onto the lid. So, what we decided we were going to do with this, because we're doing the Niklaus tradition, we decided we would do a look that includes red. So you can do anything you want, use any palette you want, so long as you have red in your look somewhere. So, because I've only recently got this, and I've only used the greens and purples so far, I want to go in with some of these, possibly starting with that orange just to get the red to blend a bit easier because reds, reds are not very easy to blend so this could be a hot mess. Um, I do have a discount code with the cosmetics, the company that produced this. I don't earn from it um, and I paid for this palette myself. Right, so the Niklaus tradition. Um, it's celebrated differently in North and South Germany. Um, South Germany includes more kind of evil characters like Krampus, um, which you may have heard of. But basically, in Germany, on the 5th, children 
clean their shoes and put one in front of their bedroom door. And then in the night, the Niklaus, I'm deliberately not putting much pigment on here because I, I just want to build it up slowly. The Niklaus will fill the shoe with oranges, nuts, sweets and if you're lucky a little gift. Um, it's unsure how or why it started but in the Catholic Church there is a saint who died on the 6th of December called Niklaus now there's two different types, I've, I've seen it listed as Niklaus of Myra and Niklaus of Myrna and Myrna is actually my mum's name, my late mother's name I should say um, and he actually received his sainthood because he saved um, some impoverished girls from having to become a sex worker because their dad had no money and he gifted them gold nuggets to free them from having to become ladies of the night um, and that's that's generally considered the origin of that tradition um, in the Netherlands they celebrate St. Nicholas on the 5th of the 12th, so the 5th of December. Um, every year, their story is slightly different. Every year he arrives in the Netherlands in a steamboat from Spain. Very specific, isn't it? I know. Um, Sinterklaas, as he is known, very very similar to Santa Claus. Yeah, we're sending a bit of a paganish theme here. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Santa Claus rides a white horse on the rooftops, and his Zvarta Piet or Zvarta Pieten, which is literally translated as Black Peter, um, drop gifts down the chimney of good children. But bad children get put in the sack and taken away to Spain. So that is the tradition that we are celebrating with this collaboration. As you can see I've gone in initially with this orange which is built up beautifully I have to say. This is shade Sandworm. I'm going to clean the brush off on a clean washcloth and I'm going to go into just notice a spelling mistake they've got Lydia instead of Lydia for the red I'm going to call it Lydia because obviously the wedding dress that she ended up wearing in Beetlejuice was red so I'm sensing that's why she's the all of that here we go, this is where we find out how good this is because reds are notoriously difficult to blend and that's blending like a dream <coughs> okay I'm not worried though I've got some on my lid because I'm going in with quite a dark shimmer today on my lid so that's really not a problem. Um, as you can see I'm doing circular movements in this direction towards the nose, doing a bit of a bounce when I get here and then reverse in the direction as I come back out. Um, I'm 45, I've lost 14 stone which is just under 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. Um, and doing this circular movement just helps gently move the lid around so that you don't end up with any white patches um, but I do struggle with this eye, I've, you can see I've got super deep creasing just there um, 
from where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old. Uh, so I do have to end up stretching that lid out because no matter how much of this I do, it, it still ends up stripy. And also if I'm putting a shimmer on, which I am today, if I don't stretch the lid out, I end up with the issue that instead of being blended onto the lid, it tends to pack loosely in that deep crease. And then throughout the day we'll just end up cascading down my face, which is... I mean, if you want to start creating a one-sided, multicoloured freckle look, it's great. If that's not the aim you're looking for, that's good. So you can see those have actually blended out really nicely. I've not built the red up too, too deeply. But it will build up deeper than this if you want. I just wanted more of a, a holly berry red rather than a, a cherry red. And I think if I build it up much deeper than this it's going to end up more cherry than holly berry. So what about you? Do you have traditions in your country that I haven't already mentioned here today? Do you have something similar to that? I love hearing um, traditions that, that are maybe not as well known. I mean, everyone knows that, you know, Father well, Christmas was originally viewed in green and gold robes, a la the ghost of Christmas yet to come from a Christmas carol. But then Coca Cola depicted him in their colours of red and white. And uh, that suddenly became the accepted version of Father Christmas in the, uh, the all too commercialised version of Christmas to me. Um, to me Christmas is, is about spending time with your family and friends and people that you love and showing them you love them. Don't bankrupt yourself for Christmas. There is absolutely no point doing that at all. Because if you've got to bankrupt yourself to buy people's love then... Right, changing to the contour brush. And I'm going to go in with art, this kind of deep burgundy red, which I'm going to pop through the crease and onto my outer corner. There, just tiny circles all the way through the crease. And back again. Obviously I'm going to build the colour up. It's much better to put less on your brush and slowly build the pigment up than to put too much on and suddenly find that you're having problems blending. I much prefer, and it's not that these shades aren't pigmented because they are as you would have seen from the swatches that I put up in the first film that I did with this. Which if I remember I will link below. If I forget, give me a nudge and I'll just update the description box. Just pop some of this on the outer corner. So when he said include red, you, you knew I was going to include red, right? I mean, this would be a great Christmas Day or Christmas Eve look. If you're going out, if you're wearing a little back dress Christmas Eve. To then have a striking red eye look. 
would be really stunning and then you could accessorise your outfit with say red shoes, red bag, red jewellery and you would look totally put together and pretty damn stunning. This would also look lovely with a, oh could you imagine like a, a bottle green velvet dress for Christmas day and then doing this look, oh wouldn't that be lush? What have you got planned for Christmas day, have you got family around or are you working or, we um, I took my brother in law how to cook a roast. Um, so last year was the first year that I didn't have to cook Christmas Day since well 30 odd years since I was 13 years old. Just tidying up the edges here a little bit because obviously red will stain so just Get rid of any fallout bits as quick as you can really. I know this looks dirty, it's because I'm using a charcoal micellar water, which is obviously black. So yeah, just tidy up any fallout quick as you like really, just so you don't get any I mean obviously you're going to put your, I'm going to put my base on over the top of this so it's not really much of a problem for me. Um, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush however. So I'm going to go in with this brush here and once I've applied the pigment to it I'll be going in and wetting it with this Wet n Wild Primer Water. Uh, I'm going to go into Undead which is this fabulous deep like the shimmer version of this one basically my nails go really well with this look don't they do for an infill though I need to get my Christmas nails done soon um, yeah once I've applied the pigment I'll wet the brush but don't go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush okay this also looks like it's almost hard panning as soon as you use it but then this one down here did that but I could still pick pigment up and it appears that I can still pick pigment up so it's just obviously got a very high oil content in it so I've wet the brush I'm just going to dry this ferrule off the easiest way to do that is put it in the crease of your fingers and just spin it around because the last thing you want is moisture getting down loosening those bristles. I'm going to use my little mirror to look down into so you can see what's happening up here. And I'm just going to apply this. Oh wow, that's a stunning shade. That really is lush. Cranberry jelly on the turkey at Christmas. Unless you're vegan, obviously, in which case it's cranberry jelly on the nut roast. Tofu? Vegetable Wellington? Right, just dried the brush off and I'm going to go back into that undead. Um, yeah, we've got. So I've got brother-in-law cooking again this year and this year he will need less supervision because last year was his first year doing Christmas so I was still very kind of walking him through it. He did fabulously though um, and then now, now he feels really confident doing a roast which is awesome. Um, obviously myself and my husband 
He's actually got Boxing Day off, so we can actually stay there if we want to, Christmas Day. Which means I can have a drinky past Christmas morning. Right, I'm just going to... That's what I mean about the... Uh, striping that I get. Please excuse my stomach, it was fed this morning at 5am when I had breakfast with the hubby before he left for work. He's got dentist today, bless him, after work. Had a feeling for out. Yes, yeah, so this is myself, my hubby, mother-in-law, brother-in-law. We've got Father Michael, who is, uh, he went to school with, school, he went to university with the boy's dad. got one of hubby's workmates coming around as well so it's going to be a really really lovely Christmas again um, and for once I can just sit there and do pretty much nothing which it is it's gonna be a little bit strange for me to be quite honest I'm used to being the one bustling around at sort of half five in the morning peeling brussels and stuff because I like I like my veg to be fresh on the day. Right, um, I'm going to pause you while I go and chuck some uh, foundation and whatnot on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. Um, you'll see me instantly, I will see you the next time I press the record button. Hello, I am back. Right, I'm going to go back in with the contour brush 9, I'm not used to putting the deeper colour through. Yes, I've put a wing on today. Um, I'll grab my quick flicks that I'd bought, the green one. Um, although it does look black on here, but it is actually green. Um, and even though I'd stored them flat, so that it wouldn't run away from either end, the, the you know the liquid in between and shook it well. I draw my own flicks anyway, but I just wanted to see whether the end had dried out. Sure enough, when I stamped the flick, it gave you the bottom bit, but not the sharp pointy bit at the top. So, just a bit of warning: if you're going to use those quick flicks, you might have to shake them every day to make sure they stay good. Okay, I'm going to dip into Linda and Art to get a combination of both just to run this along the lower lash line really softly. It can sometimes be a problem putting reds and pinks under your eye. That can give you a pink eye look, but I never put anything in my waterline anyway, um, or at least very, very rarely, because my eyes are so sensitive. They don't like anything in my waterline, so I just do underneath the eye anyway, um, which means you're you're less likely to get that pink eye look. And I just like finishing off. And the colour underneath my eye. And now for highlight, I'm actually going to go in with... And people are going to think I'm nuts because obviously I've powdered everything. And this is a Colourpop Super Shock Cheek. So it's a cream in shade Over the Moon. Because it's got this pinky greeny shift to it. But I don't know how Colourpop have done it, but you can actually apply this cream over powders without disturbing your foundation and stuff underneath. Genuinely don't know how they've achieved that. So I'm just going to pop a bit of it up under my brow here. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay probably about 10 years ago now. Just pop that up under the tail of the brow there. 
and then in a corner and just blend it in with the bits underneath the eye same thing this side the only thing with these um, super shock formula you must must make sure a you do them up very tightly and b that you store them out of direct sunlight otherwise they do start cracking and don't put them next to a radiator for goodness sake right I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more of this highlighter all over my face uh, my preferred type of brush is like this quite densely packed this is a Royal and Lanicle Chic Pro highlighter brush. So I'm going to be using this to chuck some more of that all over my face. I will put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look. I am back. I think I need to put a little bit more bronzer on because I think this particular palette, this particular foundation is a tad light. So let's just deepen my bronzer up a little bit. This is um it's a new one that I'm trying. I, I'm doing my foundation reviews a bit different now rather than just giving you my first impression view of it. I um, I use it for a little while first so I can give you a more rounded review. Make up a little bit more blush on as well. I'm trying to use up a blush and it's actually quite difficult. I didn't realise quite how difficult it is to pan a blush. Which does rather beg the question, why do I have so many blushes? But this is a blush that I've had for a couple of years now to be honest. It's probably a little bit... Uh, it's, it's probably a little bit expired, it has gone hard. I do have to sort of scuff the top up with a clean mascara wand or a spoolie to um, to be able to pick the pigment up. But I'm determined to use it because this is my favourite shade. Right, having made myself look a little bit more human, that looks better. Right, and just to prove the point, because putting that on has dulled my highlight down, I'm going to go in with a little bit more just to show you that it doesn't move your base around and you don't have to go in with your fingers okay so obviously I've got this um, you, well, you just saw which bronzer I used. It was the Too Faced Pineapple Sun one. Um, Tarte Exposed. The mascara, I used the Blowout Cannabis Sativa one from Revolution on the top. But at the bottom, I have got a baggie full of clean mascara ones. And I dipped this particular wand into the lipstick that I've used and used that for my lower lashes so I have red lower lashes and the lippy is ho 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 from the Jeffrey five year anniversary white cap um, I love it when I used mistletoe I did say it was a thinner consistency and I had to put two coats on this one single coat full opacity but this is my finished look using my P 
palette for the recently deceased for the Traditions Worldwide Nicholas collaboration. Now, I believe there's only four of us doing this because a lot of people had already got things planned for um, a lot of them are doing Vlogmas um, or have got other things planned and this was kind of a, a bit of a last minute jobby so there is um, myself there's my YouTube wifey Nikki Raven there's Kristin who is on Instagram and there is Val who is Ms. Ms. And they are all linked in the description box below so you can easily get to them and check out their looks that they have done. Will they have gone all red like me or have they just used a hint of red? And to be honest they will probably far better explain the tradition than I will because obviously I'm just going on the information that they have given me but you know Nikki for example she's uh, from Holland, she's from the Netherlands, uh, Kristin I believe is from uh, Northern Germany so they can far better explain the traditions that they have grown up with. Um, apologies if I did get anything wrong or if I got any of the pronunciations wrong I did my best. So now that you have hopefully liked this, commented, maybe even shared just a little bit, uh, please go across and check out the other three ladies that have taken part in this and just check out their looks and see what they've done and do all those good YouTube things or Instagram for Kristen's one and uh, you know drop a little comment, let them know you came from 4F Beauty and show them the same kind of love that you show me all the time. Right, my darlings, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.